So hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to learn about how you can actually manage AWS S3 using your Python code and how we are going to fetch, store and view objects using our code. So let's begin. AWS S3 is basically a simple storage service. It is a scalable cloud storage solution for any type of data. So now we'll learn about how we can create a bucket and then how we can upload some files to S3, fetching files from S3 and viewing the objects in our bucket. And then we can also learn how to delete an object. All right, so let's begin. So first of all, we have to configure our AWS and get the keys for that. All right, guys, so now I'll show you how you can create access keys for your AWS account. So head up to your AWS console and then head up to the your profile section, uh, your profile down bar, and you can see the security credentials tab here. Now click on that. And now scroll down to the manage keys sec section and you can click on create access key here. And now it will ask you to create the keys for a particular user. Uh, you can select the user for which you want to create some keys, but I'll just select the root user, which has all the permissions. Uh, but you can select any particular user which has limited access to the AWS uh, services. So I'll just create a access key for my root user here, and I click on create access key. So here's the access key, uh, access key ID, and secret access key as well. You can copy these and set up in your AWS configure uh, in a terminal. All right. So the second thing includes is downloading the AWS CLI uh, package. You can install it for Windows through the MSI installer. You can search for AWS CLI install. And you can head up to the first link here. And now go down in the Windows section and you can head up to the AWS CLI uh, official link, which is present right here. And now you can uh, install it uh, any way you want. And you can run this package like this and just follow through all the setup process and install the AWS CLI. All right, it is already installed for me, so uh, it will not walk me through all the steps, but uh, those are just simple steps which requires access to directories or permission, something like that. For installing uh, AWS CLI in a Linux system, the commands are re relatively simpler. So you just have to hit a call request to AWS CLI server, and then you'll have to unzip the file you have installed here, and then just uh, run this command sudo AWS install that will install AWS CLI in a Linux, Linux system. All right, so after you install AWS CLI, you can head up to your terminal. Uh, you can first restart your device. And then head up to the terminal and look for AWS hyphen hyphen version to verify if AWS CLI has been installed or not. And if you get a version number just like this, that represents that your CLI has been installed. Now, for configuring the AWS CLI uh, for multiple services, basically to configure your AWS account inside terminal, you can run the command AWS configure. And now you can enter all the access keys and all the uh, secret access and also the region name, which are present right here. Uh, as you can see, I've already entered it, so it shows me a value right here but it will sh uh, show none if you have entered nothing as of now all right so i'll just click on enter because i don't want to change it right now and it will be a secret access key you'll put, put the secret access right here for the region name just put the region name in which you're working and for the default output format you can keep it none as of now all right i know aws has been configured now so now you can start working with aws all right so now we can begin the coding part so first of all, we have to install Boto client for that. So we can run pip install Boto3, the terminal. And then uh, we can start, we can begin the coding process. We just needed one requirement, which is Boto3. And now we can start working by importing Boto3. And then we can create a S3 client by Boto3.client S3. All right, so now we have our Boto uh, our S3 client ready. Now we can run some functions with our client. So first of all, I'm going to run the function for creating a bucket. So how do we run that? Is by first of all, I will choose a bucket name. This should be a unique identifier, which is globally unique. So you need to make it something random. Probably I will choose test bucket one two three q one two three w h g something like that. Some some random word, and then I can use the S3 dot create but bucket function. And pass the bucket as the bucket name. For I can also pass some uh, constraints, like I can pass the region name for my AWS account, which is actually AP South One. All right, so this should create a bucket, and I can just print a statement confirming that the bucket is created. All right, so now if I run this script, and so yeah, our bucket has created. I will check. In the S3 console, I will go to my buckets.
and I can see that my test bucket 123WHG is present right here. So that's great. We have completed the first step. Now we can move on to the second second thing, which is uploading objects to S3. So for this process, I will I have chosen an, a sample image here, and we can start uploading this. Now I will first of all write the path of the image, which is just card or JPG. Then I can use the S3 dot upload file function for this. I'm going to pass file name as the first argument, then the bucket name, and then uh, I'm going to pass file name again to refer the path. All right. So now, so now we can uh, print another statement, which can just be file is uploaded. So I will comment out the code above. So if I run the script now, it says file is uploaded. So we will now verify it and. So there it is, the car.jpg object is present inside the bucket. So we have completed the second step as well. So now we can move on to fetching files from S3. So how do we fetch files? Basically, I will show you how you can download the file using S3 client. And for that, you need to use the s3.download file function. We can use s3.download file. Then I can pass the bucket name, first of all, and then I can pass the file name. Uh, basically, this is the object name present in the bucket. And now I can pass the final downloaded file name. Uh, I can see it something like download card or GPG. All right, and now I'll just print here file downloaded. So if I run the script now, my file should be downloaded and it is downloaded right here. Perfect. All right, so now we can also run one more function which is viewing all the objects in the bucket. So how do we run that? Is basically getting the response from S3 dot list objects V2. This will list all the objects in the bucket. I will pass the bucket name as a parameter. And now I will loop through uh, my response. But first of all, I, I need to confirm if contents is in the response because that, because that contains all the bucket information now i can just iterate through the response contents variable and just print the object's keys value so if i run this i should get all the bucket all the objects in the bucket and there it is card or jpg which is the only object in the bucket right now perfect so now we can also delete an object for so for this we can use the s3 dot delete object button or uh, delete object function and I can pass the bucket name as the first parameter and the key, which is the object name, as the second parameter. And now I can just print a statement like file deleted for confirmation. All right, so now I'll run this file and it says file deleted. So if I now run just the view object function, it should technically print nothing. And yeah, so it printed nothing. So basically, our object is deleted. So yeah, guys, that was some. Um, those were some basic operations with AWS S3 and how to uh, basically run the CRUD operations in the bucket. And that's it for the video, guys. So thanks for watching.